Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can access your Coolify WordPress website files using an FTP client. The first thing that you will need to have is your SSH key. On Windows, you can go to your C drive, users, range, and then .ssh. Here, you should be able to find your SSH keys. And if you have yours and you can connect to your server via SSH already, that's great. Now, the next section is going to be for the people that lost their key. And if you already have yours, please skip the next section. So for the people that have lost their SSH key and they need to create a new one, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. We will need to recreate our server in order to apply an SSH key. So we can't just go here under security, create a SSH key and then apply it to the server. That won't work. We'll need to first create an SSH key and then when we create a new server, we need to apply that. But it's not so bad. What you can do is if you go to the servers and find your server from here, click on it, you can actually go to snapshots and create a snapshot from here and then recreate your server using a new SSH key by applying it. So let's do that. Because the snapshot might take a while, I'm going to click on take a snapshot and this is going to give me a name here. It's going to say that it's going to charge me a little bit and that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to click create and buy now. And while this snapshot is creating, I'm going to go and set a new SSH key that we can apply later on. So if you go here under security, I'm going to delete this one because I won't need it anymore. Remove it. And now we need to create a new SSH key. Let's do that. Click on add SSH key. And from here, we need to create one. So if you go somewhere, let's say on your desktop, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to delete this old key from here just so it doesn't get in the way. And then I'm going to go to my desktop here and just open PowerShell, the terminal, whatever you have. So left shift, right click for me and open the terminal. I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And we need to run ssh-keygen. And you should be able to do this on Linux and Mac as well. Press enter. And this is going to generate a public private RSA key pair. And then you can give it a name if you wish to. I'm going to keep mine default. So I'm just going to press enter. Passphrase, I'm going to press enter and then enter one more time. This will generate the public private key for me. And if I go back to my SSH folder, you should be able to see that this generated my keys here, which is great. And from here, we need to open the public key. So dot pub right click open it with a an editor or something i'm going to open it with visual studio code and then we need to copy this so i'm going to do alt a to grab everything and then control and c to copy it and then i'm going to go here and just paste it under the ssh key paste it this is going to give me a default name of ruddy lenovo here that's absolutely fine and you can set this as your default key if you wish to i will do that and then I'm going to click add SSH key. So now we have a new SSH key here that we can apply to our new server. So if I go here under servers, and then if I go here, go to snapshot, as you can see, my snapshot is ready to use. And one thing that I want to mention is that unfortunately, if you haven't got a static IP address, they call it floating IP address. This means that when you create a new server, you will lose your IP address. So if you're not paying for one, Let's have a look. They are the IPv4 is three euro sixty for the month, and then the IPv6 is one twenty for the month. So if you haven't got this, unfortunately, your IP will change, and unfortunately, you will have to uh, go to your domain names and update your record. And for me, it's really unfortunate because I have a couple of records, so I'm gonna have to go and manually change all of them because I never added a static. I, I was either being cheap or I just didn't notice it at the time, to be honest. Saying this, let's go back to the snapshots and let's go click here on the three dot and then click on create a new server from here you can do the standard procedure choose your location go here we have the snapshot selected as you can see uh, go under the type choose what virtual cpu you want for me it's going to be x86 intel amd and for me this is exactly the same that i was using previously so i'm going to go with this one here scroll down so we have networking we have the public ipv4 and the public ipv6 that's fine let's go down and this is the important thing now you need to apply your newly created ssh key and as you can see because i set mine as default this is already selected which is great if you haven't got this selected make sure that you select yours and then scroll down scroll down i'm gonna reapply the same firewall rules that i had before i do want backups of course 
yep everything else looks good that's fine and then snapshot i'm gonna put radis radis server like so and then create and buy now okay i guess this is gonna take some time to provision and our website is still gonna be working so now i can use this ip address to point my domain names so now i'm gonna grab this and then go to my domain names and update them so some of my domain names are under cloudflare i'm gonna select my qualify domain name here and i'm gonna go to the i believe it was dns records let's have a look and then here they are so i'm gonna have to update all of them and i'll probably speed up this process just so you don't have to watch it so let's save it and save it and by the way make sure that your survey is running before you change your records otherwise your website might go down for a bit so i've got these done and i'm probably gonna wait for this server to start before i change my main domain name because my websites will obviously break uh, they're still pointing to this server so i'm gonna go to cloudflare select my most important domain name here go to dns records and then later i'll change these so we have 57 percent here and i'll probably uh, pause the video and speed up the process here okay my server is now working so i'm gonna swap my most important domain name which is my blog i'm gonna go here and then just change all the records so like that and this one and this one now technically speaking this is going to take a little bit of time i guess to propagate you can go to a website like dns checker here and do ruddy.dev in my case have a look and it looks like it started uh so 138 not yet so yeah it might take a little while so yeah it might take a little while but in this case your website will be working either way is because it's either going to be pointing to the old server and when it switches to the new one it's going to start working as well to the new one and then uh, once you're happy with your nurse server you can remove this one from here you can power it off for a bit if you wish to before deleting it just in case and that's it now let's move on to the next part of accessing our files via ftp so now that we have our ssh key let's have a look at how we can access our website using an ftp client so there are numerous ways that we can do this but today i'm going to be showing you by using the puttty key generator so from here we need to use this id underscore rsa file in order to create a ppk file that we can use in our ftp client so i'm going to be using puttty keygen I'm going to link this in the description below, but essentially what you need to do is click on load, go to your SSH folder, click on all files, unload the ID underscore RSA. And this is going to say successfully imported foreign key, click OK, and now we need to save the private key. Click save private key. Are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase? If you have a key passphrase, make sure that you put it inside here and then press yes. And then I'm going to save mine inside here saying radis server. And then this is going to be .ppk. So save it and we should get our newly created file inside here. Now let's open a FTP client. So in my case, I'm going to be using WinSCP and then click here on a new tab and we can create a brand new website by clicking new site here. Let's go and grab our IP address from here. Whoops. So let's copy it from here. So first of all, we need to start with SFTP here. The host name is going to be our IP address. The port number is going to be 22. The username is going to be root and the password we don't need to set because we can go to advanced and then we can go to SSH here and then authorization. And then we can grab the key by opening the three dots and then click on radis-server ppk file. So I'm going to click on this. And now that we have this loaded, I can click OK. And then that's it. Make sure that you save this if you wish to. Give it the name radis-server and then press OK. And now I can click login. Continue connecting to an unknown server. OK, accept this. And hopefully you should see that we are connected. So if I click on here, you'll be able to see the full server. Now I'm going to try to zoom in in production because the files are pretty small, but essentially we need to navigate to var, lib, docker, and then volumes. 
from here you should be able to see all of your website so i have a couple of databases as you can see i have maria db for my wordpress website and i have a wordpress instance now if you have multiple wordpress websites this is mine here if i click on it and if i click on data this should look very familiar to you uh, you have all of your wordpress website here but if you're unsure about the name here i'm going to show you how you can get it if you go to your qualify instance so ready dot one for me and if i click on blog for me here blog and if i click on storages here you will see this name rsggswo underscore wordpress files this is how i was able to find my name here for my website so essentially here it is and you should be able to basically make some changes if you wish to and that's it okay once the dns has propagated i just wanted to show you that i can now disable my old server here power off you don't need to delete it if you're worried but power it off and obviously check your websites after you power it off and one thing that i wanted to show you is that while i'm here uh, basically if i go to my wordpress website here and if i go to my wp content and then team and then if i select my team from here obviously you have your team files if i open my website super quickly inside here i'm just gonna put something on the footer here but basically if i grab the footer i'm gonna put it on my desktop super quickly and i'm gonna open this in visual studio code and i just change here just put test one two three save this file and i'm gonna put this file back in my server so i'm gonna drag it and drop it uh, press yes the file is now uploaded and if i go back to my website and if i click refresh you'll see that I have test one, two, three, which means I didn't have to go to Coolify and restart anything. Obviously, if your website is cached somewhere, make sure that you uh, reload that and you should be good to go. That's it.